how to halt the renewed bloodshed in eastern Ukraine and mend relations with Russia were the questions dominating day one of the Munich Security Conference. Germany's defense minister said providing weapons to Ukraine was not one of the answers. Focusing only on the delivery of weapons can add fuel to the fire and move us away from a desirable solution. The leaders of Germany and France have spent the past few days shuttling between Kiev and Moscow, attempting to broker a peace deal, a process backed by NATO. NATO does not seek confrontation with Russia. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry arrived to join Vice President Joe Biden and engage in what appears to be a growing push for a breakthrough on Ukraine on the sidelines of the conference. On Saturday, Ukraine's President Petro Poroshenko is expected to hold face-to-face -face talks here with Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel, as well as the head of NATO and Russia's foreign minister. The hope is, at the very least, they can begin work on a new ceasefire agreement that could potentially halt the renewed bloodshed in eastern Ukraine. But the lack of a coherent response to that crisis and challenges elsewhere, like the rise of the Islamic State group ISIL, has also fueled much debate in Munich. Is this a, a matter of people failing to follow the rules of the global order, the fundamental principles upon which we've tried to build a, a global security and peace architecture? Or is it a function of a failure of leadership? Is, uh, are the, uh, the main players no longer leading it, in particular the United States? Some of the new threats are being considered a response to weak political leadership, a growing phenomenon the conference's own risk report describes as a vicious circle of international disorder. Jack Barton, CCTV, Munich.